He was like, oh, we know they could be cooking drugs in here or something. Like, we don't know what's going on. I'm like, what the fuck? Cooking drugs? What the hell? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They take my kindness for weakness. Still coming out strong. Still coming out strong. Still coming out strong. Hey y'all, thank you so much for watching Angel League TV where we talk about everything and when I mean everything, I mean like girl, I know y'all like first of all, where the fuck you at? <laughs> and like what camera are you recording from? So let me tell you, um, the reason why story months kind of got like, uh, uh, how can I say it, missed, um, it's because we were actually in the process of moving um, as well as y'all know I was sick or whatever for like two weeks out of December. It was really, really hectic, and so now we, we're finally settled in for the most part. I ain't gonna lie, I still got a couple boxes that I have not, like, unpacked because, like, a bitch just be tired. But, um, yeah, that's basically what's been going on. Um, the camera, babe bought me <laughs> a freaking camera, y'all. I don't know if y'all noticed, but I haven't been recording from my camera, um, from a camera for like over a year now. If you've been rocking with me for a long time, you would tell the difference in my video quality from like a little over a year ago to like right now. So, um, well before this video, of course. So yeah, you would notice the difference. However, um, I didn't have my camera because I ended up selling it because of some financial issues due to me taking care of ghosts of course my baby i love him so much <laughs> he bought me a camera i'm so happy it's my first video i'm recording from um it's my first video on this camera that i'm recording from by the way if y'all hear any like squeaking noises or um dogs in the background it's because where we moved to it's like somewhere downstairs somebody has like horrible piping or something and then makes like this really, really squeaking noise and it's really really annoying so i'm sorry if y'all hear it hopefully my voice and everything kind of like um make it blend in and not too noticeable but yeah i didn't get to say it in my last video because my last video was obviously recorded before the new year's but um happy new year y'all before i get into the story time if you have not subscribed already go ahead and subscribe right now because you do not want to miss these stories y'all i'm telling y'all you don't want to miss it my last story time was uh, about how ghost uh, fractured my finger um almost broke it but it actually ended up being fractured and like i had to go to the hospital and get stitches and stuff like that if you haven't watched that video y'all know what to do go and watch that video first before you watch this video as uh, as well as the other videos let's get into the story so this story is going to be about how ghosts ran ran from the cops and the cops raided my home twice okay <sighs> basically after the whole finger situation and stuff like that he went back to his old ways like y'all know how i was saying how he had like ran my bath water and like gave me a bath and all that type of stuff y'all all of that changed like he ain't never did that ever again since that day well obviously because we're not together but like whenever we were together he ain't did that no more like all of that was just like gone out the window like bitch the fuck so he basically was doing it out of guilt obviously and um it was just it, it went back to the same ways like same old miserable depressing just all of that we had neighbors y'all we stayed downstairs but we had neighbor, neighbors upstairs and an, uh, a neighbor right um like whenever you walk outside of our door we had another neighbor to our uh what is this my left so um we had neighbors and he has a bad habit of walking outside, talking on the phone, extra loud, smoking weed, all of that on our front porch as if we not in front of, first of all, we lived in front of um, a park, like the, play, the playground, like we were literally right in front of the playground. So kids were always outside, even like past 10 o'clock, even though they had a business being outside around that time, but they still were outside and he would be outside on the phone, talking extra loud, cussing and smoking weed and all of that outside on our front porch as if like we the only motherfuckers living in the apartment complex. When we would have arguments, he would like slam the fucking door real, real loud. Like it'll be like 12, one o'clock in the morning. He'll like slam the door. He would just be really, really obnoxious. Like it's as if he was invincible. Like as if we just were the only people in apartments, like I said. And he would just like slam the door real, real loud. And I'm, I know for a fact like our neighbors heard it and heard the commotion and stuff like that um so yeah so this one particular day it was um 
I don't know what time it was, but it was like afternoon or whatever. Um, the cops had actually came to my door. It was two cops. It was a white cop and it was a black cop. And they came to my door. Basically, it was like they got a call um, about a disturbance and stuff like that. And so, ghosts. He like, what they want, what's going on? And I'm like, you know, somebody called him and said, you know, it was a disturbance or whatever. So he got really, really like belligerent and was like talking back to the officers, like as if they ain't got a gun and handcuffs. But he got really, really like defensive. Y'all know how he is. He always, he was like that with me. So, you know, I'm not surprised that he was like, well, I kind of am surprised that he was like that with the officers because I mean, it's me and a police officer is two different things, two different people. But um, obviously he didn't give a fuck. So he was really, really belligerent and just cussing. And I wish, why y'all not gonna out dough? And bothering me, we not bothering nobody. And who called the cops and this and that. And so him doing all that commotion, gave them like they he they couldn't calm him down so they decided to put him under arrest so they handcuffed him um or whatever because of how he was being with the officers and whenever in the middle middle of them handcuffing him he fucking ran y'all mind y'all they probably would have handcuffed him just for a little while to, take, to calm him down just talk to him or whatever but he wants to fucking run away he didn't get far y'all like he ran mind y'all we like i said we stayed in front of a fucking playground and so they had kids and people mama and daddy and stuff watching their children and they saw all of that and he he running and i'm outside i'm like why are you running as he running and then like um before he made it to the parking lot he just stopped like he he gave up and they was like tackling him and stuff like that and they had him on the, on the uh, grass like face down and there was um they finally were, were able to put him in handcuffs and stuff and they put him in the back seat of the car of the cop car and y'all by him running he had his little slides that he had on all of the, both of those were in the grass like he had no shoes on whenever they arrested him and i'm trying to talk to him i'm like why you did that like why are you running and he in the fucking cop car screaming to the top of his lungs crying i'm like what the fuck is this nigga crying for like first of all you ran away from the cops first of all they could have just been trying to talk to you like who knows but you i guess was so scared that you fucking ran as if you were gonna make it like as if you really was gonna get somewhere because we mind yo we in a, a apartment complex it was nothing but cars nothing but parking lots by the time he like if he was to run he couldn't go nowhere like they was gonna catch him regardless because there was nowhere to go <laughs> nowhere to run at all He was screaming and crying and banging his head against the, the fucking glass that's like in front of you whenever you are in a police car. I've never been in a police car by the way, but I just know from like TV and stuff like that. And from this particular situation, he was screaming and crying. He was like, call my mama and this and that. So I'm on a, at this point, I'm like scared and I'm crying too because it's like, I'm trying to figure out why the fuck he ran away from the cops. Like why, like what, what, what's really going on? And so, I call his mom and she's trying to call, calm me down because I'm crying because I'm scared. I don't know what the fuck they're going to do. I don't know if they're going to arrest him. I don't know if they're going to take him in. I don't know what the fuck going on. So, of course, they ended up taking him in. And um, long story short, I had to fucking bail his, his ass out. His um, bond was like 5000 And so, you know, you only pay 10% of it, which was 500 and at the time I was broke. I didn't really have that much money because we had just not too long ago moved into that apartment. And you know, he had me broke anyway. And I was just, I still wasn't really working as much um, due to all the stuff that we were going through. I really didn't have like the, the drive to even fucking work. So I was always calling in. Like it was just a whole hot ass mess. Like I would never like be like that to this day, like ever again, like ever. But he had me so down and so depressed and so, all over the place that like I, I was missing work like just you know fucking up in life so um I didn't have all of the money so his mom sent me a hundred dollars and I had a little money but it wasn't equal enough to 500 and um, I had to pawn my fucking Mac desktop um I had to pawn one of his TVs I had to pawn uh some other stuff too to you know 
and be able to come up with the five hundred dollars. I'm calling the bail bonds and people, and I'm like, is there any way I could pay half and this and that? And they're like, no, you got to pay the full amount. And I'm, I'm just like, oh my fucking gosh, like I, I, I can't believe this is fucking happening. Like I'm really over here about to bail this crazy ass nigga out of jail after everything he put me through. Put now he put me through this dumb ass shit, and like this is just too much. So of course my dumb ass, I know my dumb ass. Went downtown, went to the people, and had to put in, put out fucking references and stuff to bail his ass out. I do all types of stuff. I, I ain't never went to bail nobody out, like, ever in my life. So, I didn't know everything that, like, you know, I didn't know the process. But I found out that day, you had to have a valid Texas ID. It couldn't be expired. Uh, I had to put down my work information. I had to put down every single thing about me plus my f motherfucking family and friends, basically. So, um, I bailed him out finally that uh, following day. He probably got out maybe like 5 or something like that, p.m. the next day. And mind y'all, he was on my phone calling me. Her baby just, y'all know how niggas be when they be in jail. Like, he was the same fucking way. He was like, I gotta get out of here. Cause if you don't, cause I think it was like a Thursday. And then that following day was a Friday. And he was saying if I didn't bail him out by that Friday, then he would have to sit that whole week. And it's something, I, I don't know what it is, but it's like, on the weekends, they don't process it, process stuff. I don't, I don't know. If y'all know, y'all let me know. But some some reason, I had to bail him out before that, before the weekend hit. Because if I did, then they were going to end up transferring him somewhere else. And he wouldn't have been able to get out until, like, that Monday or Tuesday. So, bail his ass out. We get home. He crying. Baby, I'm sorry I put you through this. And, um... You know, I was just afraid. I didn't want to go back to jail. I didn't, you know, because he was already, he already was dealing with probation and going to fucking class and stuff like that from a case that he caught from his ex or because of his ex-girlfriend back in New Orleans. So, which is a part of the reason why he came to Houston for a better life. But um, we already know that didn't go well. <laughs> so... He was just telling me all of that. And I'm just like, baby, it's okay. Being stupid as hell again. And I'm like, baby, it's okay. You know, I'm, I'm here for you. I'm down for you. Because honestly, I was. Like, whenever I'm in a relationship with somebody, I'm down for you. I'm here for you. Like, like I'm, I'm a ride or die ass bitch. Even if you are doing stuff to me, hurt me. Like, I was that type of bitch at, at that time. And even still today, I'm still a down ass bitch. However, you're not going to put your hands on me. You're not going to disrespect me. You're not going to make me broke. You're not going to do any of that. Like, I'm, I'm a whole total different bitch than I was last year, okay? Like, whenever a bitch say, new me, new year, new year, new me, all that type of shit, like, I really mean that shit. But I had really grew from that way before 2018. But I'm just letting y'all know I am not like that no more. Um, I learned from my mistakes. We all do. So, the next day, I get a knock on the door. I'm the type of bitch, if I'm not expecting nobody to come to my house, like... I'm not going to answer my door. Like, if you don't call me and say, hey, my nigga, I'm on my way or whatever. Like, I'm not going to answer my door. Like, I don't do pop-ups, none of that. I don't even care if you my motherfucking mama. Like, no, I'm, I don't do pop-ups. So, um, I look out the peephole and I see a white man with all black on, black belt, and some black boots. It was a fucking officer. Why he was at my door, I have no fucking idea why he was at my door. Did I answer? Hell motherfucking no, I didn't answer because we, the fuck, the shit that we just went through, you know, the day before, like, it, I was being, I should never answer the door right then and there whenever they knocked on my door the first time. But after that, I'm like, hell no, I'm not answering the door for no, nobody, no cops, no nothing. You gotta tell me you got a motherfucking search warrant or something like that in order for me to answer my door at this point. Um, that's how, like, paranoid I was. Like, I've never been that paranoid about cops, laws, like, none of that. Like, because I've, I've never been in trouble. So, it's like, h him put me through what he put me through basically, like, traumatized me. Literally. Like, I'm still kind of traumatized to this day. Like, whenever somebody knock on my door, just randomly, without me, like, noticing, or, I mean, without me, um, expecting somebody, like, I get creeped the fuck out. Like, I'm still like that because of that particular reason. But, um, he knocked. The police officer knocked or whatever. And he knocked some more. I didn't answer the door. And he eventually left. And I'm like, why the fuck is he here? Like, what the fuck is going on? So, ghost, like, I don't know why they here. Like, why would they be here? You know, uh, maybe they just coming to check up on everything since, um, because of what happened yesterday. I don't know. I don't fucking know. 
So, the next day, girl. <sighs> the next day, y'all. Okay, y'all ready for this? The next day, I get another fucking knock at my door. And it's the cops again. Now, mind you, it's not just one cop. It's actually two cops at this point. And I'm thinking to myself, bitch, what the fuck is going on? Do you need to move? Like, well, this motherfucker's looking for you at this point? Like, what's going on? Like, you never had this problem before until this nigga walked into your motherfucking life. So, they knock and they knock. And at this point, they're knocking, like, really, really hard and for even much longer than the, the officer did the previous day. So, once again, I ain't answering no motherfucking door. I had my, both of my locks on my door, my top lock and my bottom lock. Can't nobody come in this bitch like, again, I need to see a motherfucking search warrant and me to get in my motherfucking shit, okay? So, they said he knocking, they said he knocking, and all of a sudden, I see other officers, cause block, I see other officers blocking my daughter's window because how it was set up, like, my, it was, our front door, a window, and then in my, my daughter's room, it was her window, in our room, it was another window, all facing the same direction. So, we were able to see everything on that little strip or that little sidewalk that led to our apartment, well, to my apartment. And I look, and I see that they outside, like, literally standing by her window, and I'm telling my baby, I'm like, look, don't, don't don't uh, talk loud, don't say nothing. Like, at this point, I'm I feel, I'm feeling like a motherfucking criminal even though I ain't even doing shit because I don't know why the fuck these people at my door and I was so afraid to open my door because of what happened the last time. So, I go to my room and I look out my room window a little bit and I see some other cops on my, uh, surrounding my fucking window and behind them I see fucking fire trucks and firemen and stuff like that like everybody is surrounded like firefighters and also police officers are surrounded our my apartment and i could not understand for the life of me why like at all so they steady knocking they're steady knocking and i'm just hey i'm just doing my thing look i ain't i turn off everything all the tvs all of that because i didn't want them to hear any type of noise coming from my apartment so all of a sudden, I get a phone call from an unknown number, like a number that I've never, like, that I don't recognize. And I answer, and um, it was a guy who was like, hey, um, I'm the leasing manager or whatever for the apartment. And um, we just wanted to know if you were home because we had a, um, a complaint that, you know, it smelled like a dead body coming from your apartment. And we just wanted to, like, you know come in your apartment and to make sure everything was okay just do a check to make sure like you know everything's good so i'm like who would make that complaint like there's no dead bodies like i don't know what you're talking about like it, like that's crazy but i'm not at home right now so y'all can't come to, come in my apartment not like a motherfucker but like i said i wasn't answering that motherfucking door under no circumstances okay so he's like well it's okay we can just go ahead and go we can open the door while you're you know i have the key obviously and we can just open the door and i'm like no it's okay i have an alarm system in my in my apartment um I don't want y'all coming to my apartment while I'm being there. I'll be there in 20 minutes. Still lying like a motherfucker. Don't know how the fuck I'm going to get to my apartment even though I'm already inside my motherfucking apartment. You feel me? <laughs> so, they so the, the man on the phone, he was like, okay, cool. Uh, we'll wait or whatever. So, officers and firefighters are still outside my apartment waiting on me even though I'm still in the motherfucking house. Um, and so... Uh, about 20 minutes later, the guy called me again. Bitch, I ain't fucking answer like the fuck. I, I know what the fuck you up to now, nigga. I'm not about to fucking answer no more. So, all of a sudden, I hear someone trying to unlock my door and, un, and you know, like unlock my shit and open my door. They couldn't open it because I had the top lock on. <laughs> so, at this point, I'm like, oh, fucking shit. They obviously know somebody's in my house because the top lock is on. You can't lock your top lock from outside the apartment so i'm like fuck they know i'm in my house so they they call me again i ain't motherfucking answering because i know that what they trying to do you know i had nothing well he had a little weed in the house or whatever but which wasn't shit but i'm just saying like i still wasn't letting nobody come in my shit like I, i'm just i wasn't letting it happen so they're trying to come in my house 
and I'm like, oh my fucking gosh, they're calling me, still ain't answering. And I'm at this point, I'm in my room listening to what the officers are saying from the window. And I hear someone, uh, hear one officer talking to another officer. And he was like, oh, we know they could be, uh, they could be cooking drugs in here or something. Like, we don't know what's going on. And uh, I'm like, what the fuck, cooking drugs? What the hell? It's like, what, where, where is this coming from? He wasn't cooking, like, like I said, he did smoke weed. However, he was not cooking no drugs, cooking no crack, no nothing that I knew of in my apartment. So then I hear a few minutes later from my window once again um, of one officer trying to get a search warrant for my house or whatever. So again, they still surrounded all of my windows. <laughs> on my apartment, I mean, um, around my apartment and stuff. And apparently they weren't able to get the search warrant, probably because it just wasn't enough. Like, I don't know. Um, because apparently someone had called again. I don't know who called, okay? I do not know who called and made these any of these complaints at all. But I do have a, I, I am, I do have a speculation who. Because next door we say, no, I'm sorry, upstairs. We stayed um, downstairs from a white old lady and like she just seemed miserable. Like every time I would try to speak to her, like from the day that we moved in, like the same day that we moved in, I saw her walking uh, walking her dog or some, something like that. And you know me, I, I'm friendly. So I'll say, hey, how you doing? And she didn't really like, want, look like she wanted to speak to me. So I'm like, I know this white lady I'm sorry, I'm saying she white because she white. Like, I ain't racist or nothing. But I'm just saying, this lady calling the cops on me, talking about she smell a dead body. You go from smelling a dead body, uh, saying that it smell like a dead body coming from my apartment, to I'm cooking some motherfucker drugs. Like, what the fuck is, like, what's really, really going on, y'all? Once I heard how they were trying to get a search warrant, but ended up not being able to get it, um, they eventually left. Like, the first of firefighters left. And then eventually all the officers left. Y'all, I did not want to leave my house at all. Like, and whenever I finally left, I think probably like later on that night to like go get something to eat or something like that. Uh, I was like basically running to my motherfucking car because I didn't want nobody to see me because I didn't know who was watching, who was saying what. I didn't, I couldn't trust nobody in the fucking neighborhood. It was just a mess. Like I didn't know who to trust, what to do. I didn't fucking know. <laughs> And that whole situation was just terrible for me because I had never, like I said, I've never been in trouble with the laws, like, ever. So, it was like, that happening was just, like, crazy. Mind y'all, all of this happened because of him. Had he not been in my apartment, had he not been living with me, this would have never happened. I guarantee you, because I sure fucking wasn't doing nothing I had no business doing. Like, I, I had common courtesy. I wasn't outside smoking weed, you know, doing none of that shit that he was doing. And he was doing all of that. You feel me? Like, he was the one doing all of the drugs. And, well, not all the drugs. He was just smoking weed. But he was the one doing all of that. I wasn't doing nothing I had no business doing. So, I know if he wasn't in my life, that wouldn't have fucking happened. So, it's just crazy because, like, a lot of women, y'all, I'm wrapping this story up now. Moral of the story is, I'm just going to get to my moral. Moral of the story is, don't allow a toxic person in your life. Like, if you recognize that he's toxic, you need to cut him the fuck off, like, immediately. Because stuff like that happens to you whenever you still fucking with a toxic-ass nigga. And a nigga who don't even give a fuck about your well-being either. Like, obviously, he didn't give a, give a fuck about my well-being because he was doing stuff like, dumb stuff like that. Which caused people to make up these lies and to call the cops and to have my fucking apartment rated. Like, growing up as a child, I was always, always for whatever reason, scared to the police like I would cry whenever like the police would come because I remember one time my aunt had a party and it was too loud so the police came I was so fucking scared I started fucking crying like I've never been a fan of the law like I've never been a fan of them at all which is why I've never put myself in situations to where I would even get arrested I've never been arrested I've never been inside of a cop car I've never I've been pulled over twice okay and that's because of my own goddamn fault like my uh my plates were expired and I ain't had a driver's license but like in those two times that was just like recently like last year but that's the only time like I've ever had to deal with the cops and even still like I, I was like nervous as fuck even though you know I was just it was just a random it was just you know a normal traffic stop but I do not like the police my nigga I don't like the motherfuckers so 
like I said, don't allow somebody to fuck up your life like that, y'all. It will turn. It's not going to turn out cute. It's not going to be good because they, once they fuck up your life, they're going to continue to fuck up, fuck your life up until you decide. Sorry, if y'all hit my kids, my kids in my room. I mean, in their room. Um, but they're going to continue to fuck your life up until you say, hey, my nigga, you got to fucking to sugar out. Like, you got to go. Um, so, yeah, that was how that went. Um, y'all need to leave these niggas alone. Hopefully y'all left these niggas in 2017 because y'all don't need to be doing that shit in 2018. Like, don't be dumb for no nigga no more. Like, we just, y'all, us women, we already weak as it is. Like, we're the weaker, weaker vessel as it is. But we need to show these n motherfucking niggas, like, uh, we ain't here to fucking play it. Like, no, we're not. It's either you're gonna be here and you're gonna do what you got to do or you gonna fucking shut out like that's it it's either that or that but basically after all of that y'all i forgot to mention i was very very uncomfortable living in those apartments like i was really really uncomfortable like i didn't even want to walk outside because everybody knew what happened like i was known for the girl who boyfriend ran away from the cops and the cops were raiding her house like that's what i felt like i was known as but anyways that's all i want to say or talk about that was a story about how he ran away from the police and how the cops raided our house. Um, well, my apartment. I keep saying our. My apartment. Um, my next story time is going to be how we got evicted again. Okay. Um, <laughs> from these apartments, y'all. I know y'all like, girl, what the fuck? It's just getting worse and worse. Yeah, it is. Um, it's going to keep getting worse for a little while. <laughs> I ain't just going to lie to y'all. But um, thank y'all so much for watching. And if y'all have any similar stories, feel free to put that in the comment section below. Also, subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I'm going to see you in my next story time, girl. Bye. He saw, like, the trail of blood or whatever on the floor. And he told me, whenever he saw the blood and stuff like that, he was like, oh, I bet that don't hurt as much as cutting yourself hurt. And I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, why the fuck would you say that? Like, why, why would you compare this to my fucking to me cutting myself